The 17 News at Sunrise podcast is brought to you by Clinica Sierra Vista. Welcome back to the 17 News at Sunrise podcast, where we share your news on your schedule. Working in the spirit of the Golden Empire, this is 17 News at Sunrise. Good morning here at 5 a.m. Thanks for waking up with us. I'm Maddie Jansen alongside Alex Fisher. And we begin with your 17 court watch on this Tuesday morning. The man who pleaded guilty to raping and killing a 13 year old Bakersfield girl will learn his sentence today. It was July 2020 when Patricia Alatori met Armando Cruz online. The now 26 year old from Inglewood blackmailed Alatori into meeting him in person, threatening to post pictures of her online if she didn't. He then raped and killed the teen, wrapping her body in a red sleeping bag and leaving it behind a large construction vehicle in Inglewood. Last month, Cruz took a plea deal to avoid the death penalty. Under the terms of his agreement, he will be sentenced to life in prison without parole. Charges have been filed against Chad Drown, the former head athletic trainer for the Bakersfield Condors. Drown is charged with two felonies, alleging he, attempt, he attempted to meet a minor to commit a sexual act, according to court records. Drown, who is free on bail, is scheduled to be formally arraigned later this month. After Drown's arrest, the Condors announced he was relieved of his duties immediately. A man suspected of killing a local teenager is due in court this afternoon, but yesterday he sat down with 17's Marco Torres from jail and said he never wanted to kill the teen. 28-year-old Austin French is accused of killing 15-year-old David Lopez III during a neighborhood dispute Friday evening on Pacific Street. The Lopez's say their son was killed in cold blood. But in a jailhouse interview, French says he was on his own property defending his father and his pregnant friend. And I got a call from my friend and she was very frantic. She's like, come outside, please help me, help me. I went outside and then I just heard a bunch of screaming and yelling. And then uh, some people got in a car, drove at me, jumped out with weapons. Like one of them smacked, the sh smacked, my, smacked me in the face. Then the one, uh, another person had a, had a weapon to the left of me. And, and that's, it just, that's when hell broke loose. My soul, sincere, sorry that that, that, that young man lost his life. I, 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 I'm gonna remember this every day of my life. I made a, made a mistake, but I'm a human being. I mean, everybody makes mistakes. I don't know what to tell you. Like, I wish this never would've happened. This is a nightmare. 17 News tried to reach the family of David Lopez in person over email and social media, but weren't able to get a response. Miranda Lopez says on her GoFundMe post that French is a madman and killed her son uh, while her son was protecting his sisters and herself. But neighbors and friends of French say they believe French is not a violent person and that he acted in self-defense. We were not able to find any criminal record for French. The Bakersfield Police Department is warning the public about a phone scam involving a person pretending to be part of a local law enforcement agency. In at least one case, the caller told a woman there was an outstanding warrant for her arrest. The unidentified caller told the woman her bail was set at $10,000 and she needed to stay on the line and go to an ATM. Police say the woman did not comply and hung up immediately. The BPD wants to remind everyone not to respond to unsolicited calls. Making news around the state, at least four airport workers were sickened, including one who was reportedly in grave condition after a reported carbon dioxide leak at Los Angeles International Airport. The LAFD said it happened around 7 a.m. yesterday at a utility room near the Terminal 8 baggage area, which was then cleared. Airport officials moved as many as 100 people from Terminal 8 to Terminal 7 in a calm, orderly manner. Three workers were treated on scene. One was taken to the hospital. His condition has improved, but he's still listed in critical. The airport said United Flights inbound to LAX were being held at the airport of origin during the hazmat investigation. 17 News is your local election headquarters, and for those of you who live in the city limits of Bakersfield, you will see Measure L on your ballot this election. It allows you, the voter, to decide how the city finds future fire and police chiefs. 17's Mikhail Armstrong explains. After the state attorney general alleged dozens of illegal practices by the Bakersfield Police Department causing an investigation. California Department of Justice launched an investigation that, in our estimation, revealed that the Bakersfield Police Department failed to uniformly and adequately enforce the law, leading to a pattern or practice of conduct that deprived Bakersfield residents 
of their constitutional protections. The Attorney General's office found police made improper stops, searches, and arrests using unreasonable deadly force against those with mental disabilities and more. As a part of the city's agreement with the California Department of Justice, Measure L was put on the ballot for voters to consider changes in how police and fire chiefs are chosen. Under the current charter, chiefs must come from within departments. Measure L would change that. For some, it's an opportunity for the city's growth and encouragement of outside fresh thinking that could bring change. For others, it is leaving internal candidates who know the city to compete with candidates who apply from outside the department. However, many voters might need to be made aware of the measure because of Measure L's omission from the Voter's Guide on mail-in ballots sent earlier this month. An error, Auditor Controller County Clerk Mary Bedard says that is being fixed. The city of Bakersfield had emailed us and asked us to include um, even more information in the voter information guide to actually to print the entire text of the, the ordinance change in the voter information guide, which typically isn't, isn't in there. But they had requested us to do that, and so um, we, we had overlooked that. We did not include that, and so we are now mailing that out to every uh, registered voter for this in the city of Bakersfield. A vote that could have an impact on both public safety agencies after next week. 17 News is your local election headquarters. We're down to one week until Election Day with nonstop campaigning in the battle for control of Congress. This as new details emerge about the man accused of attacking Paul Pelosi, the husband of U.S. House Speaker Nancy Pelosi. The suspect will be in court today facing federal charges. NBC's Drew Petromo has the latest from Washington. Disturbing details about the vicious attack on the husband of a top Democratic Party official. According to a new federal complaint, David DePap told investigators he was going to hold Nancy hostage and talk to her. Nancy is Speaker of the House Nancy Pelosi, second in line to the presidency. DePap allegedly telling investigators if Nancy were to tell DePap the truth, he would let her go. And if she lied, he was going to break her kneecaps. But the Speaker wasn't home. Instead, DePap found her 82-year-old husband, Paul at one point striking him in the head with a hammer just as police arrived. We believe that he did intend to kill Mr. Pelosi at the time that he wielded that hammer um, in that attack. With the suspect's mental state being evaluated, his digital footprint is under the microscope. A blog published under his name includes mixed ideology and is laced with far-right extremism, conspiracy theories, and anti-Semitic postings. We've got to do everything we can to lower the rhetoric. The brutal attack coming as campaigns across the country reach a fever pitch. Key races are neck and neck. Both sides calling in heavy hitters to help sway the undecided. Former Presidents Trump and Obama on the campaign trail. This could be really cr close on election night and perhaps beyond. From Georgia to Arizona and Pennsylvania to Nevada, the political world watching key races that will determine which party controls Congress for the next two years. In a statement issued last night, Speaker Pelosi thanked the thousands of people that have reached out to the family since the attack, adding that her husband is making steady progress on what will be a long recovery. Drew Petromo, NBC News, Washington. 17 News is your local election headquarters, and our next debate is uh, coming up this week. The three candidates running for the Bakersfield City Council Ward 7 seat will be right here in our studios for a live debate Thursday at 7 p.m. Facing off will be Tim Collins, Raj Gill, and Manpreet Kaur. If you have any questions that you would like us to ask the candidates, you can send us an email at 17news at kget.com and type question for the candidates in the subject line. To learn more about state propositions and the candidates running for local and state office, just head to our website kget.com. Click on the Your Local Election Headquarters banner. The 17 News at Sunrise podcast is a production of KGET and Nexstar Media Group. For more on all of the headlines in today's show, head to KGET.com.